What will happen if the West does not accept Ibrahim Traoré as the leader of Burkina Faso? Despite the West's opposition, 10 nations have recently recognized Traoré as the legitimate leader of the country. This shows their indifference to Western disapproval, suggesting that the West's stance is irrelevant as no other nations share their view. But why is the West opposing Traoré, and will this hostility end anytime soon? On June 28, 2024, Burkina Faso experienced a pivotal moment in its diplomatic history. The presidential palace in Ouagadougou hosted a ceremony that resonated far beyond its borders. Ambassadors and dignitaries from 10 nations gathered to officially recognize Ibrahim Traoré as the rightful president of the nation. This declaration was significant not only symbolically, but also as a testament to Burkina Faso's resilience amidst ongoing security challenges and its emerging role in regional diplomacy. For Traoré, a former military commander turned statesman, the ceremony was more than validation of his electoral victory. It was a statement of unity and confidence in Burkina Faso's future. The Western powers' reluctance to acknowledge Traoré's presidency highlighted deeper geopolitical tensions and historical narratives of influence in Africa. However, the decision of these 10 nations to support Traoré sent a clear message. Burkina Faso's sovereignty and its people's democratic choices deserved respect and recognition on the international stage. In the days leading up to the ceremony, diplomats and analysts speculated whether these nations would defy the status quo and endorse Traoré, despite Western reservations. The answer came unequivocally on that June afternoon. Representatives from countries across Africa, Asia, and Latin America stood together, applauding as Traoré addressed the gathering. Traoré stated, this recognition is not just a diplomatic formality, it signifies a new era for Burkina Faso, a time when our sovereignty is honored, our democracy upheld, and our aspirations respected. The applause was as much for Traoré's words as for Burkina Faso's resilience. Since gaining independence in 1960, Burkina Faso has endured decades of political upheaval, coups, and economic challenges. Each power transition, whether through democratic elections or military intervention, tested the country's stability. Now, with Traoré at the helm, there was hope for a new chapter of stability and progress. The presence of foreign diplomats from diverse regions underscored Burkina Faso's growing diplomatic footprint. No longer overshadowed by internal struggles and regional conflicts, Burkina Faso, under Traoré's leadership, was reclaiming its voice and asserting its place on the global stage. The Western nation's refusal to recognize Traoré stemmed from concerns over electoral transparency and human rights, long-standing issues in African politics. Critics argued that Traoré's ascent to power was marred by allegations of voter intimidation and irregularities, reflecting broader concerns about democratic processes in the region. However, for the nation supporting Burkina Faso, the focus was on respecting the nation's democratic institutions and constitutional processes. Their support reflects a belief in respecting the will of the Burkina Bay people and supporting their efforts towards stability and development. The atmosphere at the presidential palace was a blend of solemnity and celebration. Ambassadors from Germany, Russia, Algeria, Rwanda, and other nations gathered to present their letters of credence to President Traoré. The ceremony, steeped in tradition and diplomatic protocol, showcased Burkina Faso's commitment to hosting such events with grace and hospitality. But why does the West not accept Traoré as president? The West's reluctance to accept Ibrahim Traoré as president of Burkina Faso is rooted in a complex interplay of historical, political, and geopolitical considerations. Traoré's rise to power, his governance style, and his strategic alliances have all contributed to Western wariness. Traoré ascended to the presidency through a series of military coups. The first occurred in January 2022 against President Roch Mark Christian Cabaret, followed by another in September 2022 against interim president Paul Henry Sandaugo Damiba. These coups disrupted Burkina Faso's constitutional order, a factor particularly troubling to the West, which generally advocates for democratic processes and constitutional governance as the legitimate means of attaining and transferring power. The nature of Traoré's rise through force, rather than elections, casts a shadow over his legitimacy in the eyes of many Western governments. Since assuming power, Traoré has displayed authoritarian tendencies. Reports of banning foreign media and manipulating propaganda have emerged, 
suggesting a leader consolidating power and resisting Western influence. This authoritarian streak conflicts with the democratic values championed by the West. The repression of dissent and the stifling of free expression are viewed as setbacks in Burkina Faso's democratic development, further alienating Western allies who see these actions as threats to human rights and democratic stability. A significant factor in the West's discomfort with Traoré's presidency is his geopolitical realignment. Traoré has taken steps to distance Burkina Faso from traditional Western allies, notably France, while forging closer ties with Russia. The expulsion of French forces and the reopening of the Russian embassy are emblematic of this shift. Additionally, Traoré's attendance at the Russia-Africa summit underscores his intention to pivot towards Russia. This realignment is problematic for the West, particularly in the broader geopolitical struggle between Western powers and Russia. The West perceives Traoré's alignment with Russia as a strategic threat to its influence in the region, potentially undermining long-standing political and economic interests. Traoré's populist rhetoric and ambitious promises have also contributed to Western skepticism. He has pledged to make Burkina Faso self-sufficient in food production, build a nuclear power plant, and manufacture electric cars. These lofty goals are viewed with skepticism by many in the West. While appealing to nationalist and populist sentiments within Burkina Faso, these promises raise concerns for Western observers who may not want Burkina Faso to become self-reliant. Traore's anti-colonial rhetoric further complicates his relationship with the West. He has called on African leaders to resist manipulation by former imperial powers and to leverage their resources for the continent's prosperity. This stance challenges the traditional power dynamics and economic relationships that have long existed between African nations and Western powers. Traoré's calls for independence from Western influence resonate with a broader movement across Africa seeking to reclaim autonomy and assert control over their destinies. However, for the West, this anti-colonial stance represents a direct challenge to its historical and ongoing influence in the region. Despite the West's opposition, 10 nations have accepted Traoré as the leader of Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso holds significant interest for various nations due to its historical democratic governance, rich mineral resources, regional influence, improving relations with neighbors, and active participation in international organizations. These factors make Burkina Faso an attractive partner for nations seeking to invest in and cooperate with a stable West African state. Burkina Faso has a history of relatively stable democratic governance, having held its first free and open democratic elections in November 2015, followed by municipal elections in May 2016 with support from USAID. This democratic tradition, despite recent challenges, makes Burkina Faso appealing to nations prioritizing democratization and good governance in Africa. Countries such as the United States and various European nations have a vested interest in supporting and maintaining democratic institutions and processes. Viewing democratic governance as a foundation for stability, economic growth, and human rights, all crucial for sustainable development and international cooperation. Burkina Faso is endowed with a wealth of mineral resources, including gold, manganese, zinc, phosphate, silver, and diamonds, with gold being the major export commodity. These valuable resources present substantial economic opportunities for foreign investment and trade partnerships. Gold mining, in particular, has attracted significant interest from multinational mining companies and investors. The economic potential of Burkina Faso's mineral wealth is a strong draw for nations and corporations looking to secure access to these resources. The mining sector not only offers lucrative investment opportunities, but also plays a crucial role in the country's economic development by providing jobs and generating revenue. Burkina Faso is also recognized as a regional power broker in West Africa. Historically, under President Blaise Compaore, Burkina Faso played a mediating role in political crises in neighboring countries such as Togo and Niger, helping to resolve conflicts and promote stability. This regional influence makes Burkina Faso an important partner for nations with strategic interests in the Sahel region. The ability to act as a stabilizing force in a volatile region is highly valued by nations seeking to maintain peace and security. The Sahel region, which includes countries like Mali, Niger, and Chad, faces numerous challenges, including terrorism, armed conflicts, and humanitarian crises. Burkina Faso's active involvement in regional diplomacy and conflict resolution enhances its strategic importance.
In recent years, Burkina Faso has made significant strides in improving relations with its West African neighbors. For example, it has developed closer ties with Ghana, fostering bilateral cooperation in various areas. Additionally, a territorial dispute with Mali was successfully mediated, reducing tensions and promoting peaceful coexistence. Burkina Faso's ability to maintain and enhance cordial regional relationships is attractive to nations that prioritize regional cooperation and integration. Strengthening regional ties contributes to collective security, economic development, and political stability, all essential for sustainable progress in West Africa. Burkina Faso is also an active member of various international organizations, including the Liptako Gorma Authority and the International Criminal Court. Its participation in these bodies facilitates cooperation and engagement with the international community. Membership in such organizations provides Burkina Faso with platforms to voice its interests, collaborate on regional and global issues, and attract development assistance and investment. For nations that value multilateralism and international cooperation, Burkina Faso's active involvement in these organizations is a significant point of interest. It demonstrates the country's commitment to international norms and standards, enhancing its reputation and credibility on the global stage. The international community also has an interest in supporting Burkina Faso's economic development and addressing humanitarian needs. Despite its resource wealth, Burkina Faso faces significant developmental challenges, including poverty, food insecurity, and inadequate infrastructure. Nations and international organizations provide development aid, technical assistance, and humanitarian support to help Burkina Faso overcome these challenges. Economic development not only improves the well-being of the population, but also creates a more stable and prosperous environment, which is beneficial for international partners and investors. However, the West's reluctance to accept Ibrahim Traore as president and establish ties with his administration stems from deeper geopolitical and ideological concerns. The crux of the issue lies in international relationships and the West's desire for ties that predominantly benefit its interests. Traoré's stance on establishing mutually beneficial equitable partnerships challenges this paradigm, leading to Western resistance. Historically, Western nations have engaged with developing countries, including those in Africa, through relationships that often favor Western economic and strategic interests. Many African countries, including Burkina Faso, possess rich natural resources. Western corporations and governments have historically sought access to these resources under terms that significantly favor them, often at the expense of local economies and communities. This includes mining contracts, trade agreements, and investment deals that prioritize Western profit margins. The West has a vested interest in maintaining political influence over African nations. This influence ensures that African policies align with Western geopolitical strategies, including counterterrorism efforts, regional stability, and economic policies that favor Western markets. Development aid from Western countries often comes with strings attached, including economic reforms and policy changes that align with Western ideologies. These conditions can limit the sovereignty of recipient nations and ensure that aid benefits Western political and economic agendas. Ibrahim Traoré's vision for Burkina Faso significantly diverges from this historical approach. Traoré seeks to establish mutually beneficial international relationships, meaning negotiating deals where Burkina Faso retains a fair share of profits from its natural resources and gains meaningful investments in its development. Traoré emphasizes Burkina Faso's sovereignty and the need for self-reliance. This includes reducing dependency on foreign aid and influence, promoting local industries, and harnessing Burkina Faso's resources for national development. Traoré's rhetoric and policies are strongly anti-colonial. He encourages African nations to resist neo-colonial influences and leverage their resources and strategic positions for their prosperity, rather than allowing them to be exploited by former colonial powers and other Western nations. This vision inherently conflicts with the West's traditional approach. By advocating for equitable and mutually beneficial relationships, Traoré challenges the status quo, where the West enjoys disproportionate benefits from its engagements with African nations. Traoré's push for fairer resource deals threatens existing arrangements that favor Western corporations. By insisting on better terms for Burkina Faso, he challenges the profitability and control that these corporations have historically enjoyed, 
Traoré's emphasis on sovereignty and resistance to Western influence undermines the geopolitical control that Western nations seek to maintain in the region. This includes aligning with non-Western powers, such as Russia, which further exacerbates Western concerns. Traoré's focus on self-reliance and reducing dependency on Western aid challenges the economic leverage that Western nations have used to shape policies in African countries. By promoting local industries and self-sufficiency, Traoré reduces the West's economic grip on Burkina Faso. The Western response to Traoré's presidency and policies has been characterized by a lack of acceptance and engagement. Western nations have been reluctant to engage diplomatically with Traoré's administration, reflecting their discomfort with his policies and rhetoric. The West uses economic tools such as withholding aid or imposing sanctions to pressure Burkina Faso into conforming to their preferred policies. Western media and political discourse often portray Traoré negatively, emphasizing his undemocratic rise to power and authoritarian tendencies, while downplaying or ignoring his calls for equitable relationships and anti-colonial stance. Not accepting him as a leader is also part of the plan to maintain their traditional control and influence in the region. Traoré's vision and policies represent a significant departure from the historical dynamics between African nations and Western powers. By pushing for fairer resource deals, emphasizing sovereignty, and reducing reliance on Western aid, Traoré challenges the long-standing influence and control that Western nations have enjoyed in Burkina Faso and the broader region. This has led to a lack of acceptance and engagement from the West as they seek to maintain their strategic interests and traditional power dynamics. Whether the West accepts Ibrahim Traoré as the leader of Burkina Faso or not, holds little significance in the broader context of international relations and the future of the country. What truly matters is that many nations, especially those capable of promising a prosperous future for Burkina Faso, do recognize and support his leadership. Several countries, particularly emerging powers and non-Western nations, have shown a willingness to engage with Burkina Faso under Traoré's leadership. These countries value mutually beneficial partnerships that respect Burkina Faso's sovereignty and aim to foster genuine economic and developmental progress. Nations such as China and Russia, along with various African and Asian countries, are ready to invest in Burkina Faso's infrastructure, mining sector, and other areas critical to its development. These supportive nations bring significant opportunities for Burkina Faso. Their investments can drive economic growth create jobs, and improve living standards. Moreover, they are often willing to transfer technology and expertise, which can enhance Burkina Faso's capacity for self-reliance and sustainable development. For instance, partnerships with countries that have successfully harnessed their resources and developed robust economies can provide valuable lessons and support for Burkina Faso's journey. By diversifying its international relationships and reducing dependency on Western nations, Burkina Faso can pursue a more independent and self-determined path. This approach aligns with Traoré's vision of an equitable and self-reliant Burkina Faso, free from neo-colonial influences and able to leverage its resources for its prosperity. The recognition and support from these 10 nations indicate that the West's opinion is of diminishing importance. This support underscores a shift in global dynamics where non-Western nations are playing a more significant role in international affairs. The willingness of these countries to engage with Burkina Faso on equitable terms reflects a growing trend towards multipolarity in international relations, where power and influence are distributed more evenly across various global actors. Despite the West's reluctance, the international support for Traoré signifies a promising future for Burkina Faso. This new alignment can help the country overcome its developmental challenges and build a more resilient economy. By focusing on self-reliance and reducing external dependency, Burkina Faso can chart its own course towards sustainable development. The propaganda and negative portrayal by the West are likely to continue as they try to maintain their traditional influence. However, the support from these 10 nations and the potential for mutually beneficial partnerships offer a counterbalance to Western narratives. This new reality presents an opportunity for Burkina Faso to redefine its international relationships and assert its sovereignty more robustly. The acceptance and support of Ibrahim Traoré's leadership by these 10 nations mark a significant shift in Burkina Faso's international standing.
The country's ability to attract investment and foster development through these new partnerships demonstrates the potential for a prosperous future. As Burkina Faso navigates this new landscape, it can leverage its resources and strategic position to build a more self-reliant and equitable society free from neo-colonial influences. Do you think the acceptance of Traoré by these 10 nations shows that the West's opinion is becoming irrelevant? Will the West stop its propaganda or will it intensify? Let us know in the comments section. If you want to watch more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video.